Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is Teresa, Teresa's Crafty Cabana. Today I'm going to show you how to make some of your own roller foam, I guess, textures. So I got this at Dollar Tree a while ago. Don't know if Dollar Tree still sells it, but I know that you can find this at Home Depot, Lowe's, any of the box stores, maybe in Walmart, Target. Um, it's just one of the smaller paint rollers that you would use to paint your house or walls. And then these are just toilet paper rolls. And I've got some foam, that craft foam that has a sticky backing to it. It doesn't matter what color. I had a pack that had a bunch of colors in it. So any color will work. And then just some die cuts. So these are actually die cuts for uh, glimmer hot foil plate. But what I want to test with these is if I cut this out and impress this into my foam, will I get a texture? So I have two of them I want to try out that have the texture part and then the cutout part. So that's what we're going to see is if I can cut those out, stick them onto here, and the goal will be to roll it onto your gel plate. So let's give it a test. I'll start by cutting these out of my foam. First, I did want to talk about what machine I'm using to cut out my die cuts with. I actually use a Big Kicks. My Big Kicks comes with two plates. You can buy these with the machine or separate. These I bought separate. The ones that come with it are usually clear. And then my platform is well used. I've used it a lot. But what I like about it, it has seamed together over on this side, but it has plate two, plate one, and then down here. And it tells you kind of like what you can use all of these plates for. Um, so you don't really worry about losing anything when you need to go to the next plate. You just drop it back like this, and then you put it into your machine, and you just use that without the first plate, but it never gets lost. And when you're done, you just suck it back in like that. So that's why I really like this Sizzix machine. I know there are a bunch of other machines that I haven't tried that might be great, um, but I do know that's one of my favorite things is I don't lose my little plates here. Um, so this top plate would be your thinlets, which these are thinlets. Now this is pretty thick, so I'm going to try it on here first and see if it cuts through or if it squishes it too much, then I might do the next plate. So let's just start with maybe something small. Actually, yeah, that's a good one because these leaf shapes have the cutout and the impression inside it. They don't have a separate piece, whereas these have two separate pieces. So let's go with this one first. Now the sandwich you'll do, I have my main um, bottom sandwich piece that I do flip. So that one has all my cuts into it. And then I tend to preserve my top plate so there aren't as many cuts. Sometimes I forget, I might put one or two cuts in there, but this one stays a little bit cleaner and neater um, than the cutting one. And then eventually I'll probably switch them. Uh, you can get a little more life out of them that way. So I'm just gonna do a little one in the corner here. And then we're gonna stack this right on top. The sandwich in. Oh, I like to space the part closest to the assembly here, like that. And then you just roll it through. I might do it twice. You don't have to go all the way through because you're only cutting that one edge. So what I want to test here is to see if it keeps the thickness of the foam or if it totally squishes it. So just using a craft knife to get it out. So it's still got the sticky backing on it. And I think it actually did hold up pretty well. I don't know if you can see that. But it held up the thickness pretty well. And then it did emboss this little leaf shape. So I think that's going to look great. Now let's do a test with these two. I think, hmm, which one do I want to do first? Well, let's try both, see which one works better. So I'll do this way first. 
Um, if it ever moves around on you, washi tape is great. I just add a little bit just to keep it from moving. Oh, that's a lot harder. Okay. Um, I'm going to stop because that was very, very hard to push through. So let's go for removing one of those. And I'm not actually going to come in this way so that I have enough room. I'm going to move it to a new area. This is just going to be my tester foam. And we'll see if this is enough or if I need to move it, remove even one more of these plates. Uh, that doesn't really feel like it did anything. So let's see. Well, it, it did impress a little bit, not much. So I think all I really need here, I, this was too thick. So to use this number two plate was too thick. But if I just use a little bit of cardstock, this is very thick cardstock, probably like 140 pound. Let me try that. So put my plate on. I left it in place because I have taped it down, putting my little shim on top. You can put the shim on the top or the bottom. I might put it on the bottom to keep it flat. And then roll it through. Still doesn't feel like it's doing much, but it does feel like it's doing a little more than the last time. So let's take a peek. Yep, it's, it did leave a little bit more impression. And just to final this test, I'm going to do one more shim, the same size cardstock. Another piece right on top and right below where my little flower will go. So it's going to go on the bottom and my cutting plate and making sure my flower is on top of the shim and then the top cutting plate. Okay, that one I can feel a little more pressure. But it doesn't doesn't feel like too much pressure. Okay, so this one I think does it. Yeah, I think that's a good amount of pressure here. It didn't cut all the way through like it was about to do here. You can see it, it almost cut it. And this is not a cutting plate. So that's why I needed to stop. This one impressed it. Now we're gonna try cutting it out. So to cut it, I will go back to number two plate. Put down my cutting plate. Use my tape again, line this up. And I did take my shims out, so back to just the top. I do want to remove those. Okay, cutting seems okay. So let's see what we got. All right, so that... Now, I don't know, this was the test I wanted to do. So this was, I did the texture first. And then cut. Now I'm going to cut first and then do the texture. See if it will let me do that because I don't know with a small part if it will be easy to do or not. But I might as well try it because I wanted to know. So there's that. Now let's work on making the sandwich. So 
So we'll remove this top plate and just reveal plate number one. Cutting plate, but first two shims. So we'll have our cutting plate on the bot. First our two shims here, then our cutting plate. A little die cut and the flower. I'm gonna measure it up or line it up this way. Try to hold it in place with my tape. I hope this will work. I can definitely sense this is going to be more challenging. <laughs> Trying to get the tape to stick to this little metal plate and it's not sticking. So just hoping that it stays enough. It already moved. <laughs> the tape is doing no good. So we're moving that. I can definitely sense this is not the way to go. Oh, I have an idea. So here's what I'm gonna do. On my cutting plate, the one that I cut out, I'm gonna position this right back in. Then, yeah, that is gonna do it. It's gonna line up perfectly. Keep my shims, cause I do need those. And then you can see if it came off, you can recenter it. Actually, here I can use the tape to keep it centered. And now, let's see if this works. Just do a, about three or four passes back and forth. Okay. Now, just punch it out, and let's see the difference between embossing it after and embossing it before. So, visually what I can see is this one just has a lighter texture to it. This one definitely is more pronounced. This one is squished down a little bit more. This one is not. I wonder if I do the same thing like I did to this one, just using my template again. This doesn't really matter which one I use. And let's go over it with the texture a second time. I don't know if it'll be perfect, but I'm gonna line it up the same way I did the other one. Oh yeah, that definitely is the way to do it. Okay, so what works the best if you wanna make your own little textures from your Glimmer Hot Foil plates or die cuts, cut it out first, the shape, line it, line it up in here. Use that to line up your impression plate. Make sure you remove plate number two if you have a Sizzix. We do need a couple of shims, just some cardstock, heavyweight cardstock. And then use your sandwich as you normally would, and that creates a very good impression. So, next up, I'm going to just do that to the rest of my little die cuts here, cut out a few more um, different ones, and then I will start assembling them onto my little uh, toilet paper rolls. This is the remainder of my foam. So I basically used it all. I did mess up this little area here, but really, and I could have probably gotten one more little leaf out of that. I might actually do that. Um, but for the most part, I feel like I got a pretty good amount to put it on our little toilet paper roll. I'm just gonna start applying them. It's 
So because we're doing this on a roll, I could use this on a larger jelly plate. And it wouldn't really matter because it would just keep rolling. I've not tried these before, so like on a roll, but I hope this works out. All right, I got all of my little pieces attached. Hopefully they stay down. And I just wanna see, so it should fit. Oops. Like that. And then it should be able to roll. I'm going to have to play around with how much pressure. So let's just try it out. I'm going to brayer with my six inch brayer. I'm going to use some of my golden paints, my uh, transparent, mostly transparent paints. I think I'll start with um, one of these thalos to the turquoise. One thing I'm not very confident in is transparent paints versus opaque paints. I really work well with opaque paints because I know whatever color I make is going to sit on top. Um, that's really the nature of most of these craft acrylic paints. They're all going to pretty much have a very opaque look to them. These kind of more like a professional acrylics. They're going to have your transparent so the white box means it's transparent here I've got a green that has a semi transparent it's or semi opaque and then a very opaque would be a full black box like my black here and you can't see the black lines through the black I don't have any of my paints from golden other than the black being fully opaque my titanium white is semi-opaque and even my titan buff is semi-opaque that just means that if you put a thin enough layer you'll still see through it a little bit but the thicker the layer you put the more you'd be able to see through it so i'm going to do a little test today with my transparent paints because i do tend to make them opaque with other colors like white so i'm going to just do one coat of this just the turquoise Roll it out thin. And without pulling any design, just gonna pull one of these prints. This is 110 pound Nina White cardstock, cut in half, to fit on my five by seven gel plate. I will let that set for about a minute or two and then um, pull that up and it'll just be a solid color on the bottom. It's got a little bit of the bubbles, but it's going to be my base layer. So one thing I'm learning about transparent versus opaque, and trust me, I'm no expert, but transparent paints make it so that you can see through the color. The light shines through it. So you see on, on this one, you can actually see the white of the paper. If I were to put the same paint onto black paper, you wouldn't even see the paint. It would just disappear. And that's what this kind of shows you. Is over black, it just disappears. So over white, it shows the color, which means you can see through to the white below and it enhances the color now, 
Having said that, you can make these layers thinner. Um, I don't know if I can go any thinner with this already happening. Uh, but if I made it a little thinner here, I don't know. It's just kind of practicing, I guess. And then you can layer colors on top of this that go together. If you try to do, uh, let's say, magenta will make, that will go together. That will make a purpley color. But if I were to try to do, say, orange, that will make a mud color or brown. So I think I want to go with my safer color. We're going to do magenta on top. Just set that aside. Now here's the thing to consider is this one's semi-opaque. So it may actually sit on top. The opaqueness will make it so that you can actually see that it blocks the light from going through, meaning you won't be able to see the color behind it as well as a transparent paint. So now I'm going to take my DIY foam little texture, give it a good amount of pressure, just going slow while I figure it out. Go through. It kind of skidded right here. It will take some practice for me, but I actually like that. And that was actually really easy. Here's what this looks like. So I got a little bit of the brown through here. Hmm, could be my circle isn't completely circular. Also my pressure, I'm fi figuring out what works with my pressure. So that's still wet. Come in and line up my paper again. It right on top then I will let this one dry that's dry now so I will see what these two transparent colors look like together so again this is what transparent colors do they show one color through the other so you really can't even tell over here that there's magenta at all the only way you can tell there's magenta is through those white spots that were left behind so that's pretty cool. So it turned it purple, like I thought it would. If I had done the orange, it would have turned it brown, but it might have stood out just a little. So it would have been maybe slightly brown, but also still showing orange. So that's my first print with, oh, and also, let's just take a peek. This one had the embossing, this one didn't. This one did, the leaf shapes showed the veins. I think that's a really good first print of this. I'm going to do one with a yellow and a blue and then a magenta and a yellow. So I get all combinations of colors right here. Yellow, blue, green shade. That's it. Because these two will make green. That's what I want to do. This one, if I put it on the bottom, it'll be all primarily dark. So I think I want to put my yellow down first. There's a little bit of magenta speckles left on the plate. So those will probably show on my next print. Since this is going to be my base layer, I'll just put a little bit of texture down before I do my roller. So this one will have some texture. I'll let it dry and the purpose for this one, actually I'll dry it. Oh no. Ooh, try that again. We're gonna redo this. Okay, so I've got a little bit of texture in the yellow gonna pull the yellow and 
I messed up so here I'll use this side. But what that's going to do is it's going to have some white space. Kind of like how the bubbles were, or the little spots were white space with the turquoise. And then you can see the specific turquoise and magenta colors, and then the blended color, which is the purple. So for this one, you'll see white space, yellow, and then the blue over the yellow. So I want to just see what that looks like. I'll let that sit for a little bit. And that's the magenta bit that didn't get picked up on the last print. I can see a little bit of the white through. So the next one will be the blue. All right, so let's do same thing. So this one should be green. And it is green. And do you see where the white was from the yellow is now blue. So now the blue is able to show through plus the yellow shows through plus the green of the two combined colors. So really fun things with transparent paints if you know how to work with them or if you just play around I'm not super comfortable with it but I think by playing it always helps me kind of have breakthrough moments with these kind of paints that scare me a little <laughs> so I'm always afraid I'm gonna make brown and I think that most people who aren't familiar with transparent paints would be afraid they're gonna make brown so I could totally ruin this print by adding let's say magenta on top. I don't know what would happen. <laughs> it will probably look like brown. Either that, see if I add yellow to this one, I don't think you'll see the yellow anymore because there's already too many dark colors. I think the yellow would get lost. It would maybe look like green over the turquoise. But on this one, if I did magenta, you would see it. So let's do a test. I'm not gonna do like a full amount of magenta. I'm going to remove a lot of it with some texture. This is the only way I learn. Just by playing. If I don't like it, it's just a print and I can start over. Sometimes I discover the most amazing things this way. So to remove a lot of that texture, See what kind of texture plates I have. Um, I've got this grid. That removes a lot. Yeah. We'll also do I've got these little designs. They're also from foam that I made. Just kind of Trying to remove some of that magenta. Not all of it. Okay, that's pretty good. Line that back up. If you're wondering about this placement tool, if you're new to my channel, I made this placement tool using a, I think it was a art and art easel from Dollar Tree. I sold those a couple of years ago, maybe a year ago but they you can use a frame and I've got two videos that I'll put in my description to show you how to make two different varieties of a placement tool just helps you line up your jelly prints when you're wanting to layer on top of them like this okay we'll let that dry and see if that turns it to mud or if that creates a cool effect we will see
All right, so remember this one had first the yellow, then the blue, and on top of that, the magenta. And they do all say that they are transparent here. So let's see what that looks like when we pull it. Wow, that is almost not at all what I expected. If, for one thing, if I tilt this in the light, you can see that very first texture that I put down, which was that embossing folder. That's where the blue was showing through, because remember that was the white. Then where those yellow flowers were, I put the magenta on top and it made it almost a magenta orange, but it looks still more like magenta than orange to me. But then over here, you can see the purple color because of the blue and the magenta together, the green, and then the red on top, but it didn't turn it muddy. So I'm, I'm actually quite surprised that, well, the colors are dark. They don't look like brown per se, maybe a little bit up here. That might be the closest thing to like a brownish color, but I think it actually looks really cool and look at these little bright turquoise parts or blue parts coming through I think that looks really cool so that I think I'm really happy with that I did like it as the blue and the green and you know you always risk ruining a print when you try new things um no I don't know what to do on this one if I do anything else because I don't want to ruin it and I still want to work with the transparencies so let's just do a yellow on top of this one to see how different it makes this one. Just using the same yellow. I might use the cardboard side. That'll be stripes. I'm just thinking of those flowers. Actually, I might prefer the Lego. Just a little bit of my embossed folder here. So that's the four. And we'll add yellow on top. The yellow may get completely lost because I feel like that's like a really transparent color. Whereas the magenta, I feel like it sat on top pretty nicely. The yellow in this one, you can see because it's all the way at the bottom. And it just kind of changes colors as it comes to the top with the layers on top. So I don't know how this one, I think I'll get a lot of green on this one, just where those blue flowers are. That's my guess. Next moment of truth. What will the yellow reveal? Oh, wow. Okay. So I, I was right where the blue and the green I'm sorry, the blue and the yellow mix makes green, but it actually sits a little bit on top of that purple color. This part over here, it didn't really mess with at all. So that is very interesting. I like it and it's not at all what I expected. That's kind of what's so fun about just kind of playing. They're not at all how I expected them to turn out. So, and look how different they are. The exact same three colors were used, but by putting them on in a different order, you get a totally different look. So that tells me my next one will probably be starting with, I started with a blue here, a yellow here. I'll start with magenta on the next one and maybe do the yellow and then the blue on top. So that will be my final test of three colors, the transparent colors, and layering them up and seeing how different they are. Okay. All right, let's talk about the combinations we've done. We did yellow, blue, magenta. We did turquoise, magenta, yellow. So for this next one, I'll do magenta, 
yellow, blue, in that order. We'll go with this brick. We'll do a text, Get some of the spaces. Kind of make it look like a graffiti wall. Pretty cool. This one did dry a little bit too much before I pulled the print, so that will come up on my next layer. I'm not worried about that. Next layer is yellow. <laughs> Smearing again. Okay. Before that dries, add my pink. We'll see if this yellow pulls up all the way. It does. So over here it did pull up the parts of the magenta that didn't come up on the first layer. Okay, you can't really, I'd say with the yellow, you can't really make out the floral design. Let's do the blue layer. Go back in with this because you really couldn't see it with the yellow. I'll flip it. We'll go over here. And then maybe I'll just take do a few leaves in some areas. Just like that. Also, let's remove a little bit more with my drywall tape texture. I want there to be plenty of opportunity to see the layers underneath. I feel like I have to work fast though. Blue on the top. Okay. I like the pink showing through. And there's a lot of orange up here. So that would be the magenta and the yellow combined. The blue on top of it looks almost like a teal color mixed with that yellow. You can see a little bit from the very first layer, the uh, brick wall with the almost like graffiti words on it. You can see each of the colors. So here's the comparison. These have the exact same three colors in a different order. They are quite similar, but not exact. Remember the magenta is on top here, magenta is on bottom here. You don't see the magenta specifically here so much as you do here in these areas. And then this one has the turquoise. I wanted to do a test to see if all three colors stacked up on each other in a different order made a difference in the final color outcome. So this is going to be kind of like a swatch. So now that all three colors are swatched for the first round, I'll let that dry. Then I'll do my magenta over the yellow, yellow over the blue, and blue over the magenta. It's 
Since I had to let all of the layers dry, I'm going to use some Mod Podge, which is clear, once the yellow dries. And that's what I'm going to use to pull up all three prints so that there isn't anything that will affect the transparency. So we've got three totally different outcomes, even though we used the same three colors. So it really does vary based on what color is at the bottom and what color is on the top. So let's talk about what this means as far as your layers. Those are going to vary. Different colors are going to come out because they're transparent. So you've got some greens coming through here. You've got some almost oranges, but it's offset with the blue in the back. And this one's almost a green as well, even though it has the red behind it or the pink. So that, and then when you remove some of the texture to reveal the background, whether it's the white or the layer before it, you get this nice array of different colors and it all varies based on what color is on the top. So this one had the blue, this one had the yellow, and this one had magenta. Let me know in the comments if you found this helpful. Um, let me know if you struggle with transparent paints or if you prefer transparent over opaque and why. Um, I I tend to prefer the opaque because I know they layer on top of each other and it blocks out the color before it. Um, and then I, I can kind of expect that that color will be the color. Whereas when you work with transparent ones, you just never really know exactly what that color is going to look like, especially when you start bringing in different colors and bringing them up. But to me, it's always a great surprise. And I really enjoy this challenge of just working with these transparent paints. So thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. And as always, happy crafting y'all.